welcome my good good friend hall of fame brother newly elected hall of fame brother steve atwater too great day nation steve how does it sound how does it feel it sounds good and it feels even better <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised I'm not seeing you in your gold jacket right now. I slept in that thing for about two weeks after I got in, man. I, I was like, hey, I'm not taking this thing off. I got cigar ashes on it. I got red wine on it, man. I got a second jacket. I yeah. got a third jacket because a, a Sharpie from a fan got it. Have oh. you? Are you clean? Is it clean? It's clean right now. Uh, the first night that I had it, that, that we received it on – we had the gold jacket ceremony, which was Friday night. Um, you know, Dennis Smith and I, we were riding together uh, over to my party. I believe our back from the party, one, one of the two. Yeah. And he had some wine he spilled on it. No. It, it, but it was like, it was white wine. And fortunately, oh. he kind of spilled it on the seat. And it got on my jacket. Like, oh, DS. And then it, I found it was another spot I had up here from somewhere. I don't know where it came from. Uh, so You're but I got you're lucky it was dry white. Clean. Oh yeah, but you're lucky it was white wine. See, it was exactly. Like, I spilled red wine. Oh no, 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 no chance. Yeah, you're done. You're no done. chance. I was done. And then cigar ash, <laughs> like not just the ash, but like the, tip the of burn. The cigar. It was. It was not a full hole in the in the lapel, but it was. It was a bad night. It was a. It was a great night. You know the after party, which I'm sure you can relate to because you just had yours. Absolutely. I mean, it was a great night because what I noticed, I don't know, I want to get your take on this, but it's it's a whirlwind. Let's face it, those four or five days in yes. Canton, Ohio. It's a little stressful, when, too. When you're the man, oh, it's stressful, and you got to <laughs> manage your time. you got to get your sleep. you got to hydrate, all these things, and then you got all these responsibilities to see everybody, your friends, your family, your coaches. And you get it, you finally, you know, Got a little anxiety about the speech, right? Boy, a lot. Which, by the way, you did a great job. I just listened to it again. Oh, thank you. I had to get to my zone beforehand, man. I, I, I was, I had my mindset like I was about to play a football game. I like, I how have any distractions? I had to got to get honed in. Uh, I can't cry because if I cry, I'll be up there for a half an hour, and I didn't have that much time. So, uh, yeah, you know, we take bets, the guys. Uh, I t you know, we take bets every year on who's going to be the first crier. Oh, boy. Who was, who was the first crier? You know, I think I think it might have been uh, Steve Hutchinson. Was he the first one to cry? I believe so, because uh, we were sitting there and, you know, he yeah, we, were, we were sitting right next to each other. <laughs> <laughs> and he – I don't know what happened, man, but Steve – He looked at his wife and his kids, man. He yeah. Yeah, and and it's that's usually like a slam dunk when you start talking about your family. Oh <laughs> man, because you've been through so much, right? Now, now check this out, more. So when I got back, I saw some pictures of when I was up on the stage, and they had a picture of my mom behind me. Hmm. And I'm glad that the picture was behind me because if it would have been in front of me, it would have been over for me too. You know, because I couldn't see the picture. You know, we're we're talking out to the audience, but we don't see all the pictures that are going on behind us. And yeah. man, I saw that picture. Uh, man, I, think I may have been, somebody sent it to me and I was like, oh man. Yes. You know, they that, did, that, they that, do that a nice, there. you did a really nice job thanking your, your kids and your wife, man. That was very, very well done and, and very emotional. And when they zoom in on each individual, like, you know, child and then your wife, and then you're talking to her and you, you, you know, I remember from me, you know, when I'm talking about my oh. wife and then and, and she starts breaking down and then you're trying not to break down. It, be, it, it can it can become pretty, uh, you know. know. See, I went through that. I went through that in my mind yes. beforehand. And I said, I'm not going to look directly at her because yeah. all my kids, I'm looking their direction, but I can't look right at them because I know I'll be gone, bro. <laughs> I, I know I would have been gone. Steve, you've had a minute now to, to take a deep breath. I hope you have anyway. Got, gotten some rest, get, getting a little hydrated, right? And, no, I've, had, I've had some, some time to think about yeah, it. And, think yeah. about it. Is there an event, is there a moment that stands out to you, or is it a blur? Um, you know what? What stood out to me most, uh, you know, and I was, I was thinking that the gold jacket ceremony would be the moment that I looked forward to the most. And I was, I looked forward to it and it was great. 
But after the Gold Jacket ceremony, we had my the party at at at, uh, at Brookside Country Club, and it was it was perfect, man. Uh, it was better than I could have even imagined. And I've said this several times since I left there. How many times do you get to get all of your best friends from, you know, little league ball, high school ball, college and the NFL with your family, cousins, aunts, uncles, brother-in-laws, in-laws. You never get that except for at a funeral. But we had that on that Friday night, man. And it was the most beautiful time. Uh, Everyone got along wonderfully. Everybody, we've gotten great feedback from just the connections that people were making with one another. Um, And that was just, that was our hope from the beginning that, you know, all of our friends could kind of meet up and kind of interact and see what kind of good people helped me get to this point. And, uh, you know, they got a good chance to see that, man. And, and, you know, it goes to show, man, you, you can't, you can't get to the hall of fame by yourself, man. It just, it's impossible. You're right. I had my high school coach there, uh, came over as an exchange student, and he was instrumental in me actually playing football. He introduced me to the game, uh, Bob Bob Wilbur, and then he went – he was very sick with cancer when he came to my induction, passed away a week later. Oh, man. Almost feel like like he was hanging on to get that experience. Yeah. I know that you have talked about a coach in St. Louis when you went there and played high school ball. Yeah. Coach Russell? Mike Russell, that's him. He was there. Talk to me about his mentorship, what he meant to you. And I know you you alluded to it a little bit in your speech, but because you only have eight minutes, right. you're not able to – it's not a format where you can go into uh, into depth. But I'm, I'm really interested in hearing all my guys when, when the Hall of Famers talk about who made a difference to them, turned something around, sparked something in you, mentored you, taught you the wisdom – Give it to me, Steve, from from uh, Mike Russell. Yeah, well, um, I started playing football when I was eight years old, and I had some good, you know, youth football coaches that, you know, uh, got me to be tough, and, you know, we had great systems that we ran and all that. We won a lot of football games. I, I was not used to ever losing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so when I got to Lutheran North, uh, I was on the, the B team my first couple of years. My, my freshman year, I messed up my shoulder. Second year, you know, really my first year playing in high school. And then my last two years, uh, I was on the varsity with, with Coach Mike Russell as the head coach. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I know that he was the person that was interacting with the different colleges. And uh, I was a pretty good basketball player, too. And I remember him coming to me and asking me, uh, hey, he's like, some, bas- some teams are reaching out to me, some colleges about basketball. You know, what do you want me to tell them? And I told him, I said, Coach, I don't even want to play basketball in college because I just, you know, I just gotten good like my sophomore year. My, my freshman year, dude, I was like, we had 15 people on our team. I was like the 14th person off the bench. Yeah. And then my sophomore year, I came back. I was pretty good. And then I, you know, my junior year, I averaged, you know, 18, 20 points a game, a bunch of rebounds. Um, but he, he just, he was a guy who, Listen to me. Uh, he didn't try to push me into playing basketball, but he loved football anyway, and he loved rugby. Uh, I would walk in the locker room, uh, you know, sometimes early. I see him after we got done with basketball practice sometimes. He'd uh, come from rugby practice, face all scratched up, you know, kind of moaning and groaning, uh, you know, walking through the locker room. And I got to be honest, man, from 1984, that's the year I graduated from high school, to just well, oh Saturday, not this past Saturday, but was it what? It was about a week ago, yeah. just under a week ago, Saturday. Uh, that, well, I'm sorry, that Friday. He was at my party. He looks amazing. Look, he hasn't aged. Like he's must he must have put himself in a time machine or something. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when you have passion for what you do and energy, right? You don't you don't age because you 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 embrace what you're doing and it's it becomes but, a timeless thing. But not only that, like he's still involved with the school. I mean, the commitment that he has to developing young people, you know, Mm -hmm. spreading the gospel, Mm -hmm. he's just, he's all in on it. And he's made a huge impact on many young men's lives there in St. Louis. And uh, I I was lucky to be one of them. And, 
you know, I, I just couldn't couldn't forget him uh, in my speech. Uh, you know, he Carl Holsham and my <laughs> basketball coach, uh, who who wasn't there, uh, they, they're some some great guys. Steve, was he the guy that gave you the nickname the Smiling Assassin? I mean, no. what a wild, what a wild nick, nickname! I know you smile all the time. No, no, no. That give, nickname, give that to me. That nickname Ooh. came from Charlie Waters. Okay. Charlie, you know, you know, he played for the Cowboys. He was sure. uh, Cliff Harris's uh, presenter, mm -hmm. my good friend. Uh, mm -hmm. And I thought about him as being my presenter as well. But, you know, Dennis, I had to go with Dennis. Sure. But, yeah, Charlie Waters, he made that nickname up my rookie year. Um, you know, because I'd go in there and you know, full speed, bam. And then I'd get up laughing or, you know, just having a good time. And he, he made that nickname. I thought it was, I still think it's kind of corny, but it's cool. I like it. <laughs> well, it's it, it's contradicting, right? <laughs> because right, I don't, right. I, I don't know how many, on, right? I, I don't know how many assassins are smiling uh, unless right. they're like, really, I'm really smiling. sure of themselves. <laughs> Which maybe you probably were. You probably were pretty sure, and you were known for ferocious hitting. I just got done watching a YouTube clip. Uh, you're famous for it. You know where I'm going with this. Uh, oh, man. Yeah. I know. You were playing. It was a Monday night game. Uh, you're playing uh, against Kansas City, and they had a, a big running back, of course, Christian Okoye, yeah. whose nickname was the Nigerian, Nigerian Nightmare. Nightmare. Yeah, Nigeria. And nobody could, nobody could get their head across this guy and, and push him back, but the hit that you delivered – on this particular evening, defined you in some ways yeah. as a ferocious physical tackler. Um, I know that you probably weren't planning on doing that, but you certainly knew he was in the game. <laughs> was it the you know, perfect the crazy, storm? Was it the perfect storm? Or? It was. It was. It was the perfect storm, and it's so crazy because I happened to be mic'd up for that game too. And I remember. Oh. Um, Woo! Yeah, Jim Sakamano, our, our famous media guy here in Denver, and he went with the Broncos for years. He just stepped down a couple of years ago. But he was asking me all week, hey, Steve, uh, you know, you want to? can we mic you up for the game? I'm like, man, against Christian Okoye and the Chiefs? I don't know. <laughs> but as we got close to the end of the week, uh, I, I, I gave in and said yes, uh, but – you know, it wasn't like I, it was just a definite yes. Yeah, let's just do it. You know, it, it wasn't like that. <laughs> it was definitely had some hesitation there, uh, especially knowing that, you know, back then with with the running game, t teams would try to enforce their will on you. And, you know, Dennis and I, that was our job to make sure that they didn't do that and, and you know, give us a chance to, you know, get the ball back for our offense and all the good, all the things, you know, defenses try to do. Um, so yeah, I was um, I was uh, a little bit concerned going into the game, but you know, once the game started, you know, just got in, get got into the groove and got into the zone, and it just yeah. bam, it just it just happened. But you know, there was a big shift when Wade Phillips came in because the the Broncos' run defense hadn't been very good. It was you know twenty seven out of twenty eight at the time, and you know, you come and Wade comes and he. He maybe puts you a little closer to the line of scrimmage. Uh, your yeah. size helps. Your physicality <laughs> helps. Definitely helps. And and all of a sudden the Broncos are in the top ten in run in run defense. So t t can you talk to me a little bit about that shift when Wade came in, that philosophy, and how that helped you maybe at the position too? Yeah. Well, uh, Wade's first year was my first year. Yeah. Um, so and I'd heard a lot of about what the teams had done in previous years. Uh, and so I, I just think the whole mentality was different. Uh, I think they played a lot of man-to-man -man in previous years, but we went to more of a con cover two concepts uh, with us, you know, reading the right keys and being able to get up there and uh, support the run fairly quickly. Um, <laughs> yes. He just did a great job of, of utilizing Dennis and me because, you know, I'll, Dennis hit harder than I did. Uh, a lot of people say uh, that's not true, but I, it's all the way true. I played with Dennis. You ask any of my teammates, you ask anybody who's played with me, with Dennis or against Dennis, and they'll tell you, anybody who's gotten hit by him, it's like, man, that guy is a beast. Uh, 
And so, um, you know, having both of us on the defense uh, and Dennis being the uh, the veteran who ca- kind of took me under his wings and kind of showed the young pup, you know, what what the what the ropes were like. Yeah, uh, that was super helpful for me. Um, yeah. and I just want to get let you know something too. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you know. Do you know Brandon McManus? Of course. Okay, yeah, because man, he, he's he a great, great he, loves, he loves you, bro. You know that, right? Well, I mean, anything he needs from me, I'm here for him. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what I can do. He's pretty, he's pretty good on his own. He, he's he's awesome. He's an awesome guy. He's awesome a big guy, guy, big guy. I want to let you know that. Yeah, man. I met, man, him, I met him. No, no, I met him at uh, Peyton's party, and had to be pretty cool for you. And I'm jumping back and forth a little bit, but that's me part, jumping. I'm sorry. No, no, that's fine. Let's go. It doesn't matter. We can. We're uh, we're just two two brothers talking. But it had to be pretty cool with Peyton Manning and John Lynch also being oh, inducted man. this year, and and seeing the you know the Broncos nation there. And being part of uh, not just for you, Steve, but a couple of other guys that had great history with the Broncos. Yeah, and it's, it's so crazy how that worked out to where, you know, with the pandemic, obviously there were a ton of negatives involved. But um, I think that was a great positive that, you know, us mm-hmm. really going in the same year. Yeah. Um, it's kind of, you know, uh, I forget the word, but. It, it's crazy that John Lynch and I end up going in the same year. Uh, I remember back in, uh, I want to say 20, 2018 or so when the Super Bowl was in Atlanta, we were both finalists. And um, I thought, you know, you know how when you don't make it, you got to get on the bus with, it, you know, uh, all yeah, yeah. Coming. I, I, well, yeah, we were, I we were four years. Coming. You and I have been on the bus together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you did well, it longer than me, you know, and and Lynchy too. Um, yeah, Lynch did it longer, I think, than that, both of them. That begs the question, Steve. Uh, was there ever a time when you say, man, I, I'm not getting in? You know, I never said that, but I questioned whether I would get in. And I questioned, you know, hey, was my career just in my head? You know, I, I thought I was a pretty good player. You're worthy. You're then, then, you worthy. See, then you see other players going in and you like, dang, man, I think I played, you know, my, my play was on the same level or, you know, just under it or just over it. No, it's – listen, once you get the gold jacket, it doesn't matter. It's a great equalizer. No, no, that matter. No, no, that matters. It's a yeah. great equalizer. <laughs> it doesn't matter what position or what your stats are. You, you, got, a, you got a bronze bust in Ken, Ohio that's going to last a really long time. You got a gold jacket and you got a Hall of Fame ring. Uh, I don't have a ring yet. The ring well, you're gonna, uh, you're gonna yeah, have a yes. you're gonna yeah. have a, a nice Hall of Fame ring. And those three iconic symbols of inclusion into the Hall is that's forever, man. You know, and yeah. Deacon Jones said it. You can't die. You can't even you can't get cut from this roster. You can't even die from it, yeah. which is kind of wild. Nobody, nobody, nobody ever have our our numbers. We got our numbers forever. Yeah. Will you have a ceremony uh, in Denver then? Yeah, we'll have a ceremony. Uh, a well, well, we'll have the celebration of, at the ring, the ring ceremony. Uh, that'll be, I think, uh, what week? Uh, Middle of it or something. Let me yeah. see here. Week six or so. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, yeah it's going. It's going to be great. Dave Baker's going to come out, and uh, you know, yes. I, I, I think there'll be some other festivities there at the stadium. Um, with I think John Lynch and um, John Lynch and Mike Shanahan going nice. into the Ring of Fame as well. So oh, uh, hopefully nice. we'll get to all celebrate together. Um, and you know Mike Shanahan, he he needs yes. to be in the Hall of Fame as well. Yeah, yes, you know he I'm does. just saying, I'm just put it out there. You know, I'm, I'm waiting on him and Dick Vermeil. So yeah. those are my guys that I uh, yeah. love to see in there. Hey, Steve, can we talk about the Broncos uh, year 2021? Uh, I know you're connected, obviously, with with the team. You follow the team on a regular, and uh, and your opinion matters. Um, who's gonna Who's gonna play the majority of the season at quarterback? Do you think? <laughs> is it Teddy Bridgewater or Drew L- or Drew Luck, or is it a combination of both? You know what? Uh, that remains to be seen. Um, but if Drew Lock plays the way that he played on on Saturday against the Vikings. Man, he, he played a great game. He had some great assistance from KJ Hamlin with the 80-yard touchdown. That, that certainly helped. 
Yeah. Um, but but he looked poised, and you know, I also feel like one of the things that's going to be a determining factor is how well the offensive line plays. Yeah, the offensive line did well. Lloyd Cushenberry at the center position yeah. held up extremely well last year. Many times, as soon as Drew Locke had, uh, received the ball from from Lloyd Cushenberry, there'd be pressure in his face. Yeah. And Lloyd, he's got stronger, quicker, and he's and, and he's playing well. So if those interior three guys can play well, yeah, uh, I think both of these quarterbacks are going to have a, a chance to uh, to flourish. But man. Mm. I just don't know because, you know, Teddy Bridgewater, he has a lot of experience. Uh, yeah. He's what they may call the safer bet. Um, but Drew Locke has the big playability, and we saw it. We saw it on Saturday, man. He's not afraid to throw the deep ball. Yeah. Uh, the only thing is he has to make sure that when the deep ball isn't there, that he tucks it, throws out of bounds, you know, tries to run, does something other than force the ball, which is uh, what got him into trouble last year. So let's pray, you know, pretend I'm looking at the Broncos roster and I'm I'm looking at one of the most talented rosters overall in the I agree. league. Yes. Uh, and so if it wasn't for the, you know, I don't want to say the instability at quarterback, but a little bit the uncertainty. What what's the what's the ceiling for this team? What can it be? Let's say that they figure it out at quarterback. You guys figure it out. What's the ceiling here? I I think the ceiling the, the sky is the limit. Um and we got some young guys who didn't really fully break out last year. Jerry Judy uh, and KJ Hamler, they didn't really do, I, I don't think reached their potential last year. KJ Hamler was hurt quite a bit last year. Mm -hmm. uh, Jerry Judy had several drops last year, but um, those guys, they, they are top tier receivers along mm -hmm. with Cortland Sutton Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the tight ends uh, with, with Noah Fant and Albert Okwebunam, uh, you know. That's we, a tough we, one we, to say, man. That's, yeah, say that three got, times we, fast. Yeah, I mean, we, we have <laughs> we have all the players in place. Yeah. But some of the guys are unproven because last year just wasn't a great year. Yeah. And hopefully they they can shake that off and, and still have the confidence and go out there and play like champions and, and, uh, and be great. You know, I got to talk to you about that young safety. Uh, oh, just, Justin, uh, Simmons. Justin Simmons. You oh, know, he yeah. signed a massive four-year deal, right? And what do you like about Justin Simmons' game? And what advice have you given him? Any advice, or would we, you give we, him? We, we've talked several times, but you know how it is when you're the old guy, and you know you go around. Old and guy who's a Hall of Famer? I know, but 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 hey, but sometimes old guys give we give too much advice, and I like to you know, kind of see how guys are and, and try to I'm tell them you. different things that I think I'm can help you. their game. I'm and that's that's kind of the, the role that I try to play, uh, try to just help out where I can. And, and he'll, whatever questions he asks me, you know, I'll answer any of them at any time. Yeah. But I just don't like forcing my way on the people, you know, because we all have diff a different set of eyes, yeah. uh, you know, different ways of thinking about things. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm so proud of him, man. He came in here, uh, I think it was the third or fourth round draft pick and, you know, just worked his way up and continued to uh, to get better and better each year. And, you know, with the system that they're running, with the coaches, Ed Donatel and Vic Fangio, yeah. um, you know, he's he just in the right place, right time, and he's a heck of a player. He's not afraid to tackle. You know, he's got great hands. I wish I had those hands, man. I probably would have had 40 picks. It would make, made me a little bit easier selection for me to get in there, man. All right, I got you. But uh, he just has all the talents, man. And, all yeah, the teams. That... and in addition to that, he's a superb leader. Uh, okay. you know, he's the kind of guy that guys look up to on the team. I look I look up to him, man. I, I enjoy, you know, listening to him talk, listening to him get the guys fired up. Um, he, he just He's just a, a great person, man, and I'm really happy for him. And then you got this much hyped uh, Patrick Sertain uh, the second. I saw that corner. pick six he had. Oh, I know, understand. <laughs> I understand. So as as one of the all time great DBs, okay, I'm talking about you now. All right. Is is Sertain going to live up to the hype, or you think he already has? Oh, he's 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 living up to it now. We're right in the midst of it, right. and I definitely think he is. I think no. this guy, if he stays healthy, will be. Pro Bowl, Pro Bowl, Pro Bowl. He's going to have turnovers. He's going to help the offense, uh, help them, sorry, help the defense get off the field, get the ball back for the offense. Uh, yeah. He's going to be a leader. You know, 
we see all that right now, and this it's just training camp of his rookie year. Um, so yes. I, I think the sky's the limit for him. And his father's played a – I'm sure his mom did too a, – a big role in his life in terms of his football smarts. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I love to see that when, you know, a father can have that kind of impact on, on his son's career. Yes. And, um, you know, sure. I think his son realized that too. Like, man, hey, I'm, I'm talented – but I got the I got the brains to be able to think about football on a higher level than most people coming in as a rookie. Yeah, it's special when it's passed down through the generations and it makes sense and it's actually applicable to to the on the field. Sometimes it doesn't resonate with the sun, right? Sometimes right. it's just there's a disconnect or there's a who knows for whatever oh, yeah, reason. I don't want anything you gotta say. <laughs> yeah, right. But when right. it works, oh man, it's magic. You're right. So yeah. that, that's that's a beautiful thing. Last year on, on this uh, particular podcast, I had Terrell Davis on, and okay. uh, he told me that Von Miller is the second greatest Bronco of all time behind John Elway. Do you agree with TD? Oh, man. You know what? There are some great there are some great guys who've played in this franchise. Um, I'm putting you on the, the spot a little bit. But the, impact, the, the impact that he's had, I, I would probably say so, too. Um, because he's played well in big games. He's played well in not so big games. And he's a guy that if he decides, all right, I'm going to get three sacks against you, he's going to get three sacks. He's got to he's got to put it in his mind. He can do whatever he wants to do on the field. Um, and we missed him last year. And, you know, uh, Bradley Chubb, I think, missed playing with him last year too. And we'll finally get a chance to see both of them on the field together this year. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, Von Miller, uh, man, he's yeah. just he's just a, a great player too, man. Great, amazing player, always a fun guy. You know, he's a guy who takes all the pressure off. You in the huddle, he's gonna crack a joke or something, and you know, yeah. loosen everybody up. Yes, and I think you need though. You gotta have those guys. You you have the guys who are you know the serious guys. Then you gotta have some, a couple of guys that keep things light. And I know, agree where you know people aren't all so tense when when you're playing in the game so i always try to uh, do that you know another guy kenny stable and i'm dating myself but the snake oh yeah the from snake. oakland you know he yes. used to uh man he used to diffuse the pressure he used to just crack a joke in the most stressful situations everybody would laugh and they'd go hey here we go huddle up and it would yeah. be you know it'd be one of those things i think i get the feeling that von miller's the same way a little bit yeah were you that type of guy or you were you were just full speed intense. Yeah, uh, I wasn't so much uh, the Joker, you know. Um, I think Sharp was the guy on our team for that. Shannon Sharp and Keith Burns, sure. they they kept they kept us loose. Uh, yeah, but I was more the guy. Hey, come on, man, let's go full speed. Let's go. Let's go. Let's <laughs> yeah, <get> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of full speed, uh, Steve, who who's the best safety in the game today, and why? Oh man, that's a good one, man. Uh, is it not Justin Simmons? We just talked about that, didn't we? You can say any. It's hey, it's your answer. We got Justin. We, well, we have we have some other safeties. We have Derwin James, who's been injured the last year, year and a half. Uh, I think he's a great safety when he's healthy. Uh, Jamal mm-hmm. Adams is another great safety. Buddha Baker out there in Arizona. Uh, yeah. Everybody talks about the play where he intercepted it and was running it back. And what's the guy? AJ Brown was one who was the who was that who who uh, caught him? Um, one of the big, yeah. one of the big, the big receiver from Seattle. Yeah, uh, not yeah. It was uh, that wasn't AJ Brown. DK, no, Metcalf. He Metcalf. Metcalf. Yes. Metcalf. Oh, that's it. Metcalf. Yes. Yeah. yeah, he ran him down. Oh man, Woo. ran him down, man. Yeah, but uh, he, all right, he, those are good. Uh, yeah. Who's yeah. the hardest? So, who's the hardest hitter in the game today, and why? Who man? <laughs> pound for pound, Kareem Jackson. <laughs> okay. Pound for pound, Kareem Jackson. Uh, just you know, I like uh, Jonathan Abram with the Raiders. Mm-hmm. He flies around sometimes a little bit out of control, mm-hmm. but I love his intensity with, with, with which he plays the game. Yeah. Uh, um, Jamal Adams too, man. I mean, it's like, it's quite a few guys who who could bring. Yeah, back. another it's, guy who this year I think is gonna gonna be pretty nice uh, for us. We have a rookie guy named Caden Stearns. Uh, he's out of University of Texas, and then another rookie, uh, Jeremiah Owusu-Koromoa, 
with the Cleveland Browns. He's actually playing kind of a hybrid position, kind of at the linebacker, but he's I think he's more of a safety, but uh man, he's a physical guy. I, mm-hmm. I watched some of his tape from uh last week's game and uh he's gonna be he's gonna be a great player for them. Steve, let me uh let me finish by playing a little name game with you. I'll I'll say a name and whatever comes to mind when I say that name, it Uh-oh. could be a word, it could be a sentence or whatever you want to say. You ready to try this, man? Oh, uh, more, man. You know, man, I've taken too many hits over the years, man. I'm not gonna be too. I'm not gonna be too good at this. But let's try. No, let's it's not a. It's not a quiz. It's whatever you think about the player or the coach, right. John Elway. Guys and Musa. John, John John Elway. If I say John Elway to you, you say leader, greatness. Yeah. Mike Shanahan. Genius, organized. Terrell Davis. Beast, uh, you know, fast, strong, smart, um, courageous, you know, plan to coach, tell him, go out there. You don't have to see, you don't have to see anything on this place. Just go out there. And he didn't blink. He just ran on the field. How many times did that happen, Mort? Yeah, you're right. He was amazing. He really was. Yeah. He, he was amazing. Shannon Sharp. Funny, extremely talented, um, life of the team, uh, discipline. Mm-hmm. Rod Smith. Hands for days. His hands are way larger than mine, and I'm, I'm taller than he is. Um, great friend, uh, loyal, um, Committed, uh, loyal, committed, the same thing there. That's uh, fine. Consistent. Yeah. Dan Reeves. Dan Reeves. Oh, man. Uh, a guy with a great heart. Um, yeah. He's going to work you. He's going to get the best out of you. He's caring. Uh, and yeah, a great coach. Yeah, I had him in Atlanta. Uh, yeah, we actually, yeah. We actually went to a Super Bowl in Atlanta against Denver in ninety. Oh, really? oh man! After the that. ninety, after the ninety-eight seasons, you guys beat us. I don't. Oh man! I, John oh. Elway's John Elway's last year. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! I remember that game. I got a ring for that, but uh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Can I see it? Can I at least see it? You have it's it. Upstairs. It's oh, upstairs. Don't worry about. It. Okay. Next time we get together, can I just see it? Can yeah, I have a loser's right. ring? You know what? I had it with me out there, too, man. Oh, man. Oh, my You're goodness. killing me, dog. You're killing me. Uh, you should have brought that up. Well, it was because of Dan Reeves. Dan Reeves, yeah, yeah. I hope he gets into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So do I. So do I. He's, he's deserving as well. Ed McCaffrey. Ed McCaffrey, the block. <laughs> Why? Well, uh, the block that he threw in Super Bowl 32, I forget who it was. There was a linebacker who was trying to tackle Howard Griffith as he ran out to the left, and Eddie Mack cut back on him, hit him, and then pointed at him, pointed down at him. Um, Smart, uh, hard worker, great hands. Mm. Yeah. Family guy, you know. Yeah. Uh, a guy you had just for one year in uh, with the New York Jets. Uh, two guys uh, coming up now. Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick. Oh, genius! Uh, genius! Um, unlimited clock. <laughs> yeah, he, he put some hours in, man. It, some day <laughs> you get in the next morning, like, dude, did he, he even go home? No, he didn't. Yeah, I think he just stayed there overnight. Sometimes. Uh, yeah. And just, you know, one heck of a coach. I got a chance to chop it up with him for a little bit out there, too, man. He just. What what did you learn from Bill Belichick and Bill Parcells? Because that was the next guy I was going to mention. Yeah. Um, well. But what did you soak up from them? You know, because there's a lot of there's a lot of wisdom there. Yeah. Well, they both coached differently, I think. I think Belichick was a guy who. Details, details, details. Yeah. And, you know, little things that I'd never really paid attention to. Like when guys are rushing the passer, 
if the quarterback is throwing with his right arm, as you're going up, you want to have your left arm up to try and block that. You don't want to go up with two arms. You know, that's – and the Details of the position. Yes, yes. Uh, and so just the details, that, that, that detail, and then, you know, the practice in the red zone of how guys uh, – secondary uh, cornerback safeties linebackers when you're covering man to man just practicing how once you get into the red zone the guys running around in the end zone you can't leave any space in between you so you got to be in between him and the quarterback and be ready to get your hand up in there and work it down and and they practice that we practice that all the time yeah. uh and other places that the, the the stress wasn't on that as much. So he's just a very detail-oriented coach. Uh, I remember one before one game, uh, Brian Cox and I, we were talking, and and uh, I was telling her, I was like, man, this this is a lot. You know, it's a lot because we we make we're making adjustments if they go from from uh, regular set over to over to uh, twins, and if a guy goes in motion, we make a different adjustment, and he's, so. Belichick was walking out, and Brian said, "Hey, coach, uh, this uh, this defense is a little too confusing." He said, "All right, we'll take it out." Just like that. Damn, it was that easy. I could have, I could have did that. <laughs> I could have asked him about it, but you know, he uh, Brian, man, Brian Cox, he was an amazing teammate too. Still a good yes. friend of mine too. Yes, yes. Um, but you know, he was just a guy who he, whatever is out there, he's going to say it. You know, and I appreciate that about him. So B- Bill Belichick, detail oriented, and Bill Parcells, maybe more big picture. Uh, oh, definitely was- big picture. Definitely big picture. Uh, CEO. You know, I think of Bill Bill Parcells. I think CEO um, because he's going to let the coaches do what they do. He's going to let the offensive coach do the offensive stuff. Let the defense coach do the defensive stuff. Yeah, he has a, an amazing understanding of what everyone's doing and knows how to you know, speak the language, especially to the media to make sure that, hey, the wrong thing isn't said uh, and exactly what he wants to be communicated is communicated. Um, and he, he's great at that. And he's a great motivator, too. Uh, just with his words, he knows when guys need a little bit of a lift. He knows when not when guys need to be, you know, gotten on or chewed up a little bit. And, and he does that. Uh, so I have a tremendous amount of respect for both of them. Uh, Parcells and and Bill Belichick, Bill Romanowski, Romo, my man. Who you want to go with you if you have a bar fight or uh, any kind of fight? Uh, you know, a warrior. Uh, he's gonna, he's gonna yeah. do anything to win, um, and just a great teammate. You know, I, I really enjoyed my time playing with Romo. Kyle Mecklenburg, Mac. Oh man, that's my guy there. Um, the, he was the first guy that I met when I walked into the Broncos facility as a rookie and I saw Carl and it, it felt like I was looking up like, damn. Well, he's a big guy. <laughs> he's a big guy, Steve. He is a big guy. Yeah, he's a big boy, man. Did he say something to you? Do you remember what he said to you when you walked in for the first time? I know, but he shook my hand and I, I don't know if he had a, like a half a shirt or something on and his arms just looked huge. I'm like, damn. <laughs> hey, Mr. Mecklenburg, how you doing, sir? Uh, <laughs> welcome to the Broncos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and the guy that owned him, Pat Bolin. Talk to me about Pat. Oh, Bolin. man, just a man with the biggest heart in the world. He's, uh, you know, selfless, uh, gone too soon. Yeah. Um, just great leader. He, he was everything, you know, everything you want to be, man. Everything you, you'd expect out of a – a great leader. He, he was all of that. You know, I got to mention a kicker. So Jason Elam. Jay, that's my boy, man. Does he still have a record up here? I think he still has a record. Uh, clutch. Yes. Um, reliable. Mm-hmm. Um, he's quiet. Jason is a quiet person. He's not a real talker. No. Um, great family guy. Uh, and, yeah. you know, probably – one of the best kickers of all time, too. Yes, yes. Dennis Smith. Oh, my brother. Um, my teacher. Uh, inspiration. Uh, What's the connection? Showed, tell he me. showed me. He didn't just tell what, me, he showed me. What connected you to Dennis, you think? 
uh, connected him to well, you. You know what? Uh, for one, us playing the same position, you know, spending a lot of time together, uh, you know, on the field and meeting rooms. Uh, he was always kind uh, to me. He never, you know, treated me like I was a rookie. You know how some guys treat rookies yeah. like they're a piece condescending, of crap. condescending. Yeah, yeah. He he was never. Well, actually, none, none of the guys, none of the guys on our team were like that. You know. Yeah, there was a couple of guys here and there, but you know, them guys they don't last long. That is right. Yeah, uh, but yeah, he was just welcoming, welcoming, uh, yeah. and he, he was like a teacher, man. And I, I could tell he 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 had an interest in me right away, man. And I, I was lucky that you know I didn't I didn't ask a lot. I mean, I did ask a lot of questions, but you know what he said, I, I took it to heart. Like you know, I'm not going to question it. He said, all right. Be here after these many steps. I'm gonna be there after that many steps. <laughs> I think that Dennis knew that you were gonna be an asset pretty quickly. You were gonna be one of uh, a force to be reckoned with for the for those Denver Broncos. And I also think that one day he knew that you were gonna be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, brother. And you are, and you are so okay. dis and it's this so deserving. And I'm so so happy and proud for you. I know we. We're never, you know, we're teammates, but uh, man, uh, looking looking at the way you played the game and conducted yourself on and off the field, man, big motivation for me, man. So I appreciate oh, you being man. a role model for me as well. Oh, and, back uh, at you, man. Hey, yeah. We used to hang out down in Atlanta, man. Yeah, it's sure. good. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Uh, back in the in in the crazy days, you know. Yeah. But um, I hope to see you soon uh, with the gold jacket on. You. Bring all your Super Bowl rings, all two of them. I have zero. That's fine. All right, all right. We're gonna clink. We're gonna clink some blue stone, man. Together. That's, that's you know right, what that is. That's right. gonna be that. That's gonna be that uh, Pro Football Hall of Fame ring. I can't wait that's to right. do that with you, man. Appreciate you coming on. The Great Day Nation, brother. Same here. Uh, I really appreciate it. What a great interview, man. And uh, you're awesome, man. I love you, bro. And I love I'll you see back. You soon. All right, Steve. See you, bud. All right, thanks, buddy.